welcome to Kumalai's COVID-free classroom, where the only thing you'll get infected with here is math knowledge. You can pause me, rewind me, <laughs> fast forward me, so that everybody can learn at their own pace. Now let's go learn some math. Hey guys, welcome to my classroom. So today's topic, we're gonna to be working on simplifying radicals. I'm not going to go into all of the details of the, the why and the how like I usually do, I'm just trying to keep the video short. So I'm just going to be showing you two different methods. There are multiple methods, I'm just going to show you two um, and then you can choose which one you'd like to do from there. So earlier in the, in the year we were dealing with radicals like this, ones that were perfect square roots. So we did the square root of 16 was 4 because 4 times 4 makes 16. Well then, later on in the year, we went into things like this, the square root of 12, where it does not have a perfect square. And so then we just used the calculator and we approximated it uh, mostly to the nearest hundred. Well, sometimes that's not an appropriate answer and you want a more exact answer. In that case, you want to do what is considered the simplified radical form. So we're going to use method one here to simplify the square root of eight. The square root of eight, the way that I was taught, was to break it down into two factors, trying to find the perfect squares that are inside of eight as factors of eight. And the idea there is to pull out the largest perfect square, because sometimes there's more than one perfect square in there, so you want to take out the largest one. Well, eight happens to have only one perfect square in it, though, and it turns out you can split that into the square root of four times the square root of two, four being the perfect square. I generally always put the perfect square out in front because that's the one that you're going to be simplifying. So we do know how to find the square root of four from earlier this year. We learned that that's two. We cannot take the square root of two, nor can we break that down any further, so we simply just follow and copy that down next to it. And so then this would read as two square roots of two, which technically that is two times the square root of two, but generally we just, we'll just say it short as two root two or two square roots of two. And this is what we would be considered our simplified radical form using method one. <coughs> Method two is one that I don't generally use. Um, however, it's a very good strategy for those that have a hard time figuring out perfect squares um, for a number, or if the number itself is really large, trying to break it down and try to find the biggest perfect square in a large number can sometimes be difficult. So I'm gonna take the same number, square root of eight, and show the alternate method. So for method two, you're going to break it down into its prime factorization, the eight that is. So if we broke it down into its primes, you could break it down into two times four. Two is done, but the four can be broken down into two times two. And with this method, what you do is, when it's square roots anyway, you circle every pair of the same type of prime number that you have. In this case, we have two of the twos, and then we have one left over. So the way you finish this is every pair represents uh, part of the prime that's going to come out of the radical and then whatever you have not circled the leftovers would go underneath so you see this would come out as one two and then that would be left underneath because it did not have a pair and so your final answer of course is the same this time we're going to do the square root of uh, 56 Method number one, once again, we're gonna to try to find the biggest perfect square that goes into 56. Uh, that would be four times 14. I always like to put the square roots over them so that with this method you understand what you're doing is breaking it down into two factors, but those two factors are still underneath the radical. Now we do the square root of four, which is two, 
We cannot break down the 14 into any perfect squares. It does break into two times seven, but neither one of those are perfect squares. So we simply just bring that 14 down underneath the radical and have our answer of two square roots of 14. Moving on to method two, the same number, breaking it down into its primes. So we would break it down into two times 28. 28 breaks down into two times 14. And we can still break this down further. However, there are no other perfect squares that are in there, but I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm using this method, we'll just keep breaking it down. <clears throat> so now for the final answer, remember we circle every pair of the same prime number that we have. So we have one pair of two, so that will come out here in our answer. There's nothing else that will come out of outside of the radical because that's the only pair we had left. Underneath will be these two, the two and the times seven. Now, of course, two times seven is 14, so our final answer would be two square roots of 14, just like we have here in method number one. Okay, we're gonna do one more example. The square root of 48. So once again, doing the method one, I wanna show you a problem that can arise with method one. So remember what I said, we wanna to try to fit, uh, pull out the biggest perfect square that's within 48. Well, let's say we look at this and instantly we see that it can be split into four times 12. <clears throat> and that's not the biggest perfect square. Four is not the biggest perfect square, but let's say that we for a moment did not realize that and we went ahead and we went through and followed through with this. Square root of four is two and we would bring this down as root 12. Now, of course, this is the incorrect answer because there's still a perfect square within here, 12. Now, if you notice that, you can, all, you can go all the way back to the beginning and try to find a big, biggest, bigger perfect square, or you can just continue from here. If you do it from here, which I don't usually suggest, I suggest going back to the beginning, but let's just say for a moment that we decide to follow from here, we would wanna break the 12 down into four times three because we realize there's still a four that's inside there. I have to squeeze it in here, sorry, because my board is so tiny. Um, but this two here can't be left up there. It has to be brought down. So now I'm taking the square root of four, which is two, but because there's a two already out here, what I would have to do is multiply those together. Remember earlier in the video, I said that this is two times the square root of 12. So this is two times the square root of four times the square root of three. So that's all multiplication there. So that's why we have to remember that so that we simplify this two times two for my final answer. Square root of three is done. There's no more perfect squares in there. So I can still get to my final answer, answer which would be two times two is four. Let's just put it over here. So it'd be four square roots of three as my final answer. Now that of course is the long way because I didn't realize, uh, well we pretended we didn't realize that there was a larger perfect square <clears throat> here to begin with. So of course, the shorter way is to realize from the beginning that you can take a 16 out of that. So it's 16 times three, the square root of 16 times square, square root of three, which is four square roots of three. You can see the same answer, but this time realizing that there was a larger perfect square. <clears throat> so it's a nice, quick, easy method as long as you're able to find the largest perfect square that goes inside. Okay, now let's move on to method number two. This one's gonna get a little bit long because we're gonna keep breaking it down by two a bunch of times. So break it down into two times 24. Break that into two times 12. Keep going, two times six, still more, and two times three. So again, we are going to circle every pair of the same prime number. So I have a pair of twos here and a pair of twos there. So every pair comes out as a two in my answer. So a two comes out from this pair, a two comes out from that pair, and then my root three, because that's left over, no, nothing to pair with the three, so that's what gets stuck underneath the radical. And then I just have to simplify this portion here. Two times two is four. And there I have my final answer, which is the same as these. So you pick whichever method you think is the best. You could <clears throat> try both and then see which one you uh, feel more comfortable with. 
I'm going to go ahead and put up some examples here. Okay, here are three examples that I'd like you to try on your own. Choose whatever method you want or try uh, the three problems, both methods, until you decide which one that you think is your favorite. Um, pause the video now and when you come back, push play, I'll have the answers here for you. All right, welcome back. Here are the three answers using method number one, since that's the one that I'm uh, most familiar with. Three square roots of two, two square roots of 17, and six square roots of two. That's it for now. Tomorrow we'll post another video um, doing the same kind of idea, but with cube roots instead of square roots. See you guys later.